Hey, Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. It's Ollie here, and uh, you might notice there's no Sean today. It's just me. As usual, the show is presented to you by Autoclose, a vanilla soft company. And like I said, it's just me today. Um, full context, I just wanted to fire up the studio and, and talk for a bit. Um, there's, a, there's something been, uh, <laughs> if I can get my words up, there's something that's been on my mind for a little bit. And um, I haven't really thought about scripting this up or planning any of this stuff. So I just wanted to sit here and sort of let my thoughts come through and, uh, and we'll see where we end up in a few minutes time. But um, I've been thinking about how have I started to do what I would call public speaking? And and in a sense, I haven't actually been on stage, like in a room, in a conference or something like that. So you, you could define what I'm doing now as public speaking to a degree, but not um, not in the conventional sense anyway. And that, that will happen at some point. But um, how do you go from not having done this at all to proficient and decent at what you do and you know, it, with the ability to start to grow your name and your brand and your company. And um, I'm thinking of this a little bit as uh, the 17 year old that I was when I first started doing public speaking, quite unquote. And I was awful. I was terrified and my heart rate was at a thousand BPM doing it. And uh, I was so embarrassed at how bad that I was actually going to be that I would often say after work. And um, at the time I had no editing skills, no uh, ability to like, press pause and do a retake. It was all or nothing. You had to do the whole thing in one cut, and that was it. And that was a big problem. It took me so long. And I would I would literally stay there, wait for everyone to go, and I'd be looking at my watch like, come on, guys, it's like quarter six, go home. Let me have the, the office for an hour or two for myself. And eventually people would go, and I would fire up um, Citrix Go to Meeting back in the day, and I would record my own webinar as it was. And uh, I'd mess up the start. I'd get halfway through and forget what I was saying. I took too long to think of the next point and have a massive pause. I'd be breathing really quickly because I'm talking too fast. So I'm forgetting to breathe and I'm getting out of breath and it's really uncomfortable. And it was horrible. So I went from that to whatever I am now. And I'm definitely not saying that I'm the best, but I know that I'm decent at what I can do here. I've done live webinars. I've done recorded ones, podcasts all the time with uh, loads of guests, virtual conferences with several like super highbrow speakers. So I'm, uh, I know what I'm able to do and I want to get better at it. But I'm a long way from where I started. And I wanted to share a couple of things that if you're even somewhere on that journey at all, you might be able to pick up on that. So that was my super long winded intro and a bit of storytelling trying to, you know, drop that in there for you. But anyways, so how can you actually start? This is sort of the main problem. It's it's sort of like quitting smoking. It's like, oh, like how do I start this and that kind of stuff? You're not really sure exactly what is step one out of all of it. I guess you could say step one is working out that you want to stop. But um so what I did was I gave myself freedom to completely like embarrass myself. I um I recorded things in privacy. Uh, there was no audience. It wasn't live. It was completely just the audience of me. Pressure off. Even at that, my heart rate was thumping. Like, it was horrible experience. It was not fun. I can tell you that. I did, um, I think it was about seven, what I called then basic trainings of tools that I used in my job. And um, I knew them inside and out. So like it was a, a relaxing feeling that I knew the tools very well. Starting on something familiar was always good. Um, it, maybe if I was to do that now outside of a working context, I talk about maybe Liverpool Football Club. Like it, that's my team, supported them my whole life. And I know all the squad, the players, the everything. So I would, I would talk about that very naturally and that would be no problem. Um, so something like that is a good start if you're really at zero like you need reps to be able to just speak normally that was that was a thing that i had to learn how to just converse and come across and seem like myself that took me a little while so what i did was i recorded a few of those and uh, and they're actually on my linkedin profile they're at my very first job if you scroll down and i've, I've attached them as uh, i think it's hootsuite basic training social bro basic training tools like that social media manager tools basically um, so I, I, I produced a few of those and, uh, and I was really proud of them. And I thought, you know what, that's, that's really cool. And I posted about them and, and all those things from there, what I started to do was go on people's podcasts because there's a little bit more jeopardy there. It's a little bit more, you've got to perform, you've got to do a decent job. Otherwise it's not going to get published or it's going to look crap. So from there, I reached out to a couple of people in the market that I knew. And, uh, and from working with those tools, like uh, like Hootsuite and so on, you seem to know other people who also use them and, uh, and people who are kind of affiliated to their brand and, and all that kind of stuff. You start to network around that type of thing. That's always a good one if you don't actually know any podcasts or, or podcast hosts or anything like that. Start to network around the tools that you use and you'll find people who are similar. So if you're a Salesforce kind of person, cool. 
there will be Salesforce related companies, tools, podcasts, consultants, whatever else. And, uh, and you will find podcasts there that you can kind of latch onto. And you have a decent common ground to, uh, to at least start talking about. So that was my first step. I found, um, actually, I, I jumped in a little bit at the deep end on that, to tell you the truth. I started off on, uh, on Digital Marketing Radio Live, which was, uh, I think, a 10 p.m. UK time live podcast. And, uh, you know, it's obviously 10 p.m. I lived at home with my mom, so, I, you know, I'm like in my living room with my like cool jumper on thinking I look really smart, you know, all, all tucked in and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I tried to talk for 30, 45 minutes to, uh, to David Bain, who hosted the show. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I think I did a horrible job. I was nervous. I looked young because I was. And um, that is how you start. And I got through it just through those repetitions of of the ones I did before. Offline, no one can see it. I think the thing that actually helped me was I posted them. So they were then publicly visible and I could see viewership. So I knew that people had seen it and no one said, you suck. So what I was kind of expecting is that that sort of fame mentality you can you can hear from people. So like influencers, really famous people, they get lots of abuse and they hear lots of negatives and that you suck, I hate you, you're bad at this, whatever. It's all, that's all that we think about. No one really thinks about the praise that you get or just the lack of response anyway particularly when you don't have an audience. I didn't really get a lot of, that was brilliant, but I got a couple of people say, you know, well done, that was good. I saw that you've tried your first thing. So well done, you did a good job. And that was good, boost my confidence a little bit, but I did not get any negatives. So I was thinking going into this live thing, like if I mess it up, there are actually people watching this right now who will like leave or just say something and that type of thing. But we got through it. And from there, most of the podcasts that I've ever seen, they are not live like done live on on the day on the moment that was kind of like a radio show if you think about it so i went on uh, morgan ingram's the sdr chronicles way back in the day um i think he was at terminus at the time um he's sort of launched his own thing now all these years later and i've seen a lot of his work as well over the years but uh, that was a big one um i went on that and this is a extremely good hack for anybody who wants to get on something um i i listened to all of them I don't care how nerdy that sounds. He did like 40 at the time, something like that. So I listened to all of them. Um, what I would do is get the YouTube playlist up while I was working and it would just play the next one, play the next one, play the next one. And it would go through. So before too long, depending how long they are, you've been through all of them. And if you've been paying attention, if you've been listening, like I was trying my very best to do as well as do some work, you could pick up some things, you could learn some stuff, you could think of some uh, some notes, some feedbacks and that type of stuff. And what I would do, maybe slightly annoying to him potentially, but it worked for me. I would tell him, hey, uh, listen to episode with whoever. I thought that was really good. Really interesting that they said this. And if it actually was, you don't have to manufacture this. And every couple of days I would do something like that. So it was very clear to him that I'm going through them. And after a while I said to him, I've listened to all of them. I'd love to come on and tell you what I found out. And he said, yeah, let's do that. Well, let's let's talk about social selling because that was my sort of angle at the time. And, uh, and that was where I, most of the things I'd learned, I'd applied that. So that's a good little story of how I uh, I went from basically having not a lot of street cred at all, where the audience didn't know who I was. Like I didn't really have an audience. The host didn't really know who I was, but I drip fed him stuff which said, this is useful, this is useful, this is useful. And that he got to know me through that. And eventually I had enough in my brain to be able to come on his show and talk about it. And we did that on a Saturday morning, I remember. And that was good fun. That's one of the bigger ones that I've been on. And that was, I think I was 18 or 19 at the time, which is bizarre to think of how long ago that was. But um, but that was how we got to the next one. The rest, um, most of the other ones I've been on is kind of my friends and peers. So um, podcasting is not the be all and end all. I realize I've spoken about that quite a lot. But that is pretty much the easiest way to start. Like if you think about it, you're not going to go on stage in front of any number of people, whether it's like a pub stand-up comedy night and it's 12 people, you're, you're going to not do that if you're terrified of it. That's just like, no, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere near that. So what you can do to be safe and because it's, you know, you're not going to see the face of the people you disappoint, should you disappoint them, podcasting is fine. And lots of people are crying out for podcast guests. Uh, me, me, myself, we, we run the podcast here, at this, this one, obviously. Um, we sometimes throw in a solo episode like this. We sometimes have a debate. We'll have uh, guests all the time, obviously, as you know. And uh, we like to mix it up. But after 
nearly two years of doing this now. It literally is two months, two years actually now to this day of of, uh, of being here. I've I've not been through every one of my guests that I have in my list and my network, but you do kind of start off with a plethora of people available and then once they've been on it, it slims down so you're always looking for another guest new people to meet and that kind of stuff podcast hosts will never not want someone who is really good at what they do to come on and talk about what they do so long as it's relevant so that's an that's an excellent one once you've done a few of those webinars is the next thing and this is like a little bit awkward you can't really like say outwardly i want to go on webinars who will invite me it doesn't really work like that for some reason whereas you can a bit more socially acceptably reach out to podcasts and you can say can i come on your show and talk about this for some reason that's just a, a different line in the sand it's a bit further away and it's kind of not really done um, but the ways that i have found this work there are companies who are literally media companies and their job their sole purpose is to do webinars on repeat and they want to build their audience. And what they're really keen for, like me as a marketer speaking here, not the, the podcast host, what's perfect for me is not like the I've made it million followers person. Because like you might think, oh my God, if they promote this, we're going to get so many leads. And that might be true. They probably won't because they have so little skin in the game. Like it's literally that much. This doesn't do anything for them. It's almost like a bit of a practice. It's kind of like a warm up for a comedy tour, if you think about it. They're just, you know, warming up their speaking muscles, getting some practice in kind of it what you need is someone who's willing to promote the hell out of it and that might mean you get a couple less people to register for whatever you're doing but as long as they're like super motivated because they've got something to gain that's the sweet spot so if i'm thinking of it like um i might be a decent example of that so i don't have millions and millions of followers i have some i'd like to grow that if i was to go on a webinar like i'm talking about that I want to gain the notoriety of, oh, like he's a speaker. I want to gain that profile and, and keep it going. Not for any silly reason, but I think it's useful for my career and, and what we do here at this company. It's useful for us to have a voice. So that's a good example of like pick someone who wants to promote it because they've got a good reason for it. Not like the influencer who's got seven podcasts this week. Because yeah, sure, like they might be a good speaker and there is validity in having them on. It's like for the content, not just the promotion. But that that's another angle. So picking those shows where they want people like that not like uh you know if for instance i'm a salesperson let's not approach salesforce because they don't need me let's be let's just be honest like i know my lane i'm not in that one and uh and if i wanted to go on there i'd probably have to pay quite a lot and it probably wouldn't be worth it so you know let, let's pick something within our within our lane um so that that's a good one the next thing about webinars though is the live pressure is real like it's really real. So what I described about my very first ever recording offline in the privacy of my own office, not this one, this was years and years ago in, the, in some crappy office block. But um, when that Zoom thing comes up and it says live or when whatever tool you use and who, who cares, when it comes up and someone is in the room and it's not you and the other people there organizing it, oh my God, my heart rate. Like seriously, I've done um, I've done five or six of them and uh, I don't mind it now. It's not a problem. But the first two, I hated it. It was horrible. And what, what sometimes is a good thing to caveat that, I'll, I'll kind of get to it in a second. But what I found myself doing, again, same thing, speaking too fast, not breathing. Um, I feel like I'm messing it up because I'm talking too fast. I'm not breathing. I can't think of my next point. And I'm rushing and it's too much. And it was probably a little bit intense. And uh, maybe I seemed nervous because I was, which is fair enough. You know, you've got live pressure again, like I said. What I've learned after that, is just slow everything down because everything that you think is going on in here is literally 25% exaggerated, you know, further than what is actually true. So how fast I actually was being, maybe I was a little bit fast, but it wasn't as fast as what the audience were noticing. Did you notice I slowed down there? So that type of thing is, uh, is just practice. And it's um, if you can bring yourself to do it, and I've been called a weirdo for this, I do not give a shit. I've listened back to all of the podcasts that I've ever been on. And I'm trying to listen back to the webinars that I've been on. They're a bit longer, obviously, but I, I can critique my own performance. So this one, I'll watch it back. And what I might say is I'm a bit static. I'm not having many sort of hand gestures. I'm, I've got my mic in the way a little bit, but I'm, uh, I'm not necessarily using my body language as well as I could. And maybe my speaking tone is a bit monotone and uh, maybe I'm going a bit quick. And maybe I wasn't as refined on some of the points I wanted to make. That type of stuff, I can just quickly get out of, the, listen to this back anytime I want when I'm out on a walk, say, something like that. Doing that is a really big thing. But uh, but to go back to the webinar point, what I then learned was 
let's just make this easier. I don't have to work like as hard as possible for this. Let's let's invite a friend on and then we can share the light, share the stage. And then I have to talk half as much and I can breathe and think about it and have more time. That really helped me out. So what I quite often do is, um, particularly if it's a big, um, big stage type of thing, if you're thinking of this as a big platform, a big group of people who are going to watch this, it's never a bad thing to say, you know what, let's bring on a peer, uh, whether it be internal or external for your company, like someone who knows what they're talking about, someone who you can kind of riff off of and have that sort of connection with on, on, the, on the call or recording, whatever you want to call it, that will help. And uh, I found that a massive, massive um, assistance to me, at least not least just because of the breathing and I can slow down and think about it and I can kind of shift off to them for a minute if I've run out of stuff to say. But naturally, when you talk to other people, you have that sort of difference in uh, in how the conversation flows anyway. What I'm talking about right now is very one-dimensional in a sense. I'm having to think of everything that comes up and um, there's no sort of feedback loop in a, in a way. With live stuff, of course, there is a little bit, but you know, if you've not got any followers, then you're not going to get loads of live feedback, are you? So there's always that. And when you're starting at literally zero, that will be more the case than not. Um, so having another person there to kind of riff with is uh, is never a bad thing. And what you might often find is if, if Sean was here right now talking about his speaking experiences, we'd have talked about other different things, which is which is totally fine. But his, sharing his experience and my thoughts on his experience and questions for, based on that and his questions based on mine, all that kind of stuff. So you, you just go further in a different way with doing that. So that's always a good one. And, and the last thing that I will say, because I know that it's uh, it's nearly 17 minutes of uh, recording here. So this kind of flew by and um, hopefully I haven't been speaking too fast. LinkedIn Live is a pretty easy one. I've recently got it and you, you'll notice that we put the podcast up on it every uh, Tuesday. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, once you know how to do it, um, there's, there's nothing that stops you from firing us up at any point, any day, any time. Whether you get people watching or you know seeing it is another thing, um, but what I will say is I recently looked at my uh, my LinkedIn like post stats on uh, on Authored In or sorry Authored Up. It's a Chrome plugin. It's great, um, and my best engagement rate posts, quote unquote, are the LinkedIn Lives. Like I don't know, fifteen of the top twenty are videos, which is the LinkedIn Lives, which I was really surprised by because um, for some reason my LinkedIn bugs out and I don't get notifications on comments and likes and things on my own stuff anymore, which is super annoying because I have to go back and look and I don't like doing that. But the the videos don't necessarily get like a huge amount of buzz. There's not like seventy people in the comments lighting up my post, and you can't really promote a LinkedIn Live as well, which is a little bit paradoxical for me. In my head, I struggle with it. I think like, how do people show up to this? Because I can't alert them to it. It just happens. It's like in the feed at the moment. And if you're not there, you're not there. But it gets so much more engagement, literally treble, sometimes quadruple. Um, so my engagement rate might be say one or 2%. And this is like five, six, seven, eight percent And uh, and I'm assuming that is just them saying like someone watched it for a bit or someone clicked full screen mode or whatever. It's rarely like 20 comments or, or something like that. But this is free. Like I don't have to uh, put this anywhere. It's just a LinkedIn post. Even if you're that worried about it, like make a dummy LinkedIn and just do it there. What's the harm? Or um, you can Twitter live at the exact same way. The way that um, the way that we do this, uh, you can YouTube it, you can Facebook stream it, you can anything you want. So doing that is always good practice, I think. And um, if you wanted to bring on a guest as well, that's always just decent like content. Really, you don't even have to view it as practice. Anyways, um, last point because we've been going 19 minutes. Um, I wanted I missed something because I didn't plan this out. I just kind of opened up the studio and went for it. If you're worried about like, I don't want to start a full-blown podcast myself. I don't want to like go on loads of podcasts. I don't know anyone that has one. It's going to be a bit more tricky than I would like it to be to get those reps in. Start your own, but it doesn't have to be like a full-blown podcast. It doesn't have to be this big promotional thing. It doesn't have to be, let's get all the influencers on and that kind of stuff. Make it what you need it to be. This podcast is not the biggest one in the world and it will never be and it won't come close. That is cool. It's it's made by a company. That probably won't uh, help if you want to go up and up and up if you want to beat Joe Rogan. But we know that and that's part of the deal. That's part of the drill as well. So we know companies are going to come on, like-minded people, different types of company, market, business model, all that stuff. That's the name of the game. And we just want to build some, somewhat a community of knowledge base basically throughout the podcast it's going to be what things could i do that i wasn't really aware of that will help me in my business so that's our aim and what yours could be is i want to get practice speaking 
you know, you know what would be a good idea? Let's just talk to my customers and give them a little bit of limelight. Let's like let them tell us what they're so good at. Because like any of the tools that we use, by the way, you hit me up and ask me to tell your audience what I'm good at. I'll do it like every day. Sign me up. I'll be there now. So they'll come on. They'll want to do it. You don't have to do one a week. You don't have to do one a month. Do it whenever you need. It doesn't even have to be like on Spotify or Apple or whatever you want. Just record a conversation. That is a podcast. Talk to them about what they're good at. You can kind of share some of your own experience, ask some questions. You'll just get in the groove of being a like host, speaking, um, being aware of an audience, but not necessarily having to be in front of one. That's pretty helpful. That's that's sometimes how I've started off as well. It's kind of subjective. Uh, like in my brain, I've just uh, go, gone off and done this type of thing. But that's an easy one. And what you might find is if you're open to it being public and if you're open to them sharing it, they'll probably share it because they're like, you know what? I talked about how good I am. Like, let me share this. I want everyone to see how freaking cool I am with this company that we do some business with. And through nature of that, you're going to just start to open up the network a little bit, kind of like what I was saying with the tools. The tools that I used, I found people who used them and who knew of them. And that was how I started my little podcasting network of people to talk to and go on their show and come on mine. Same thing. Customers are the same thing. Uh, maybe even your colleagues or however you want to do it. There's little ways where it doesn't have to be, I'm a, I'm a super marketer influencer person and I'm going to make it big and I'm going to be the best speaker ever. It doesn't have to be like that. Just do what it, you know, do what you need it to do. All right. Uh, I just went on for nearly 22 minutes. That was a lot longer than I was planning to. And uh, my coffee here is probably cold. So uh, I'm going to finish up here, everyone. But uh, if you enjoy this kind of format, let us know. We're always down to mix it up. My golden rule for this podcast is there are no rules. So we don't have to do every Tuesday. We don't have to do 20 minutes or 30 minutes episodes. We don't have to have a guest. We don't have to have me. We don't have to have a short. We can do whatever. So let us know what the format is that you kind of like. If you appreciate this kind of mixing it up. And uh, I'm sure that we'll see you again pretty soon. Leave a like if you're watching on, uh, on LinkedIn Live, obviously. And make sure you subscribe and leave a five-star review wherever else you get your podcasts. We're on pretty much everything, so go find us if you're not. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye.